Today we're in uh, the Beartooth Mountains. Custer National Park. Kind of by East Rosebud Lake. It's a nice campground here. And I um, saw these kind of cliffs. Just love these things. So I decided to paint it. It's an absolutely perfect day. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, temperature is probably in the 70s or maybe 80, but there's not a cloud in the sky. This is a uh, painter's um, dream here. And just going to compose the scene. Use on a very small brush. And by the way, if you're uh, new to my channel, if you could do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. Smash the subscribe button, as the hipsters like to say. That would be great. And hit the like button also if you like this video. If this is your first time on this channel. Maybe you're not sure if you like this video yet. <clears throat> Hopefully you will. But if you do, don't forget to uh, hit it. Because that uh, tells YouTube to show it to other people, which helps me a lot. Going to change this scene around just a little bit. Basically going to borrow some elements from um, other parts in this scene. That's what's so nice about painting on location is you can grab um, different different things and use them in your painting. Um, there are some trees, because I'm standing so close to these trees, there are some trees that tower way above this from my perspective. But I'm going to leave those out. Um, the reason why is because if I put those trees in, they're going to make this uh, cliff seem smaller. And that's the last thing I want. I want this cliff to feel really big. Oops, I think I might have hit the camera. Let me just check. I think we're still good. It's actually a rock I stumbled on. And uh, last thing I want is for this thing to feel small. When you're painting things that are high up, you want to make sure that you have them go toward the top of your uh, canvas and keep your horizon line very low. <clears throat> so I'm going to start out with my darkest darks. a bit of a challenge because actually I'm going to have to move my uh, solvent can up somewhat because the sun is actually glaring off the uh, mineral spirits in my can and reflecting into my eyes and then I can't see what the heck I'm doing. I'm in a campground area, but I don't think there's anybody here. I'm actually parked in a uh, campsite that's vacant right now. I hope it stays vacant because it's a very narrow road here and be kind of a challenge to park my car without, uh, without that spot. Going to exaggerate a hill here. Down here, there's a river. You might, in times when I'm not talking, you might hear it in the distance. Um, I might go record it. 
and stick it in the video just for the heck of it. Usually I don't like to do that kind of drama stuff, but it's just too beautiful to leave out. But I'm gonna exaggerate this hill side here. Kind of emphasize it going down. I'm not sure about this tree. I might have that tree and I might not. So we have some uh, darks in here. Gonna mess them up just a bit. Next I'm gonna put in my foreground greens. The um, colors back here, they're a little more ambiguous. They're obviously a cool, but I wanna get some colors in the foreground that I definitely am confident of. And by the way, speaking of colors, we have titanium white, nickel yellow, and I love this color when I come out west. Um, cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, Transparent red oxide, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, viridian, hopefully my brushes aren't in the way, chromium green oxide, and some Gamblin's Portland Gray Warm. I don't usually use Portland Gray, gray Warm in the studio, but out here it's wonderful because um, it really mimics very closely the, um, the lights of the uh, the light side of the mountains. So it just it allows me to paint a little bit quicker and it's really nice for quickly neutralizing things. Um, it does have a tendency to <clears throat> replicate or um, replicate depth and distance in nature in a very quick fashion. Off the palette a bit. So I'm not going to take this to any kind of finished state yet. Actually, I'm going to use the palette knife to just um, push in that color a little bit. Now I'm going to go for the greens that are a little further back. When I squint at this scene, those greens are a little darker, a little bit cooler. So that's the main thing I want to get. Actually, before I keep going, I'm going to get some more Viridian. Okay, Viridian's replenished. Hello. What's that? I say that's just what I was about to start doing. Oh, you paint too? Yeah. Okay. It's a nice start. It's a perfect day for it. Pardon? Perfect day for it. Yeah, it it's not a cloud in the sky. So where are you from? The west side of the state, or Swan Valley. Okay. How about yourself? Uh, originally Minnesota, currently Pennsylvania. Oh, you're a long way from home. Yeah. Came out to do a uh, Native American. I do a lot of historical Native American art. Uh, Native American photo shoot. Oh, yeah. um, did that yesterday and spending some time here painting. What's your name? Phil. Phil? Phil, Myrna. Phil what? Myrna. Myrna? Jason Taco. Good to meet you. Glad to meet you. Yeah, that's a beautiful area. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I was just about to fill up a little higher. 
yeah, I was trying to decide if I want to get the river in, but I really want those cliffs. So, mm -hmm. figured I'd get a study of those and then uh, I'll set up a landscape and then I'll put wildlife in it. Probably will. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I do uh, quite a bit of wildlife myself. More um, Native American now, but. What's that? More Native American, but I still do. Do you? Uh -huh. Yeah, I still do quite a bit of wildlife. Where were you doing that? Um, the reservation? Or? Yeah, the photo shoot. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he gets some guys on the Crow Reservation and. Um, yeah, I've had friends there. Yeah, set, set up. Uh, went pretty well it was I wish we had lighting like this because there was I like the more sunlight and there was a lot of um, clouds that kept moving through so are you just doing a study for later or? yeah yeah I'm also recording it for YouTube I have a YouTube channel oh, you are. Oh, yep. okay. So you lived here all your life? Most of it. It's a beautiful area. Wish I lived here. What's your channel? Uh, it's just my name. Just Jason Tako. Okay. And I'll look you up. Yeah, I try to post about every week. This one won't be going up for uh, probably a month at least or more. This one won't be going up for at least a month or so. Just because I uh, posted a lot of videos in the meantime to um, while I was away because I like to have it post every week. The uh, YouTube algorithms like that. So. Let you get to it. All right, have a good one. Okay, down here, there's just a hint of some water. Let's see if I can get that in. At least block it in for now. But I don't know, it might not have that in because it doesn't really fit with the perspective of the landscape. So for now, I'm going to leave that tree out. Maybe I'll stick it in later. Clean the pallet off. All right, so Next thing is this mountain here. This 
switching to a cleaner brush. Gonna get an approximate tone in there. And there is um, some uh, stuff going on in here, highlights and things like that. Gonna leave those out for right now and paint back in over those. This color that I'm putting in right now is my main objective for uh, doing this. I really want to get this color and value um, locked in here. But I really have to get the other elements in too before I can um, judge how accurate this color and value are. And as we get down to the bottom of this cliff, the colors and valleys will get a little darker and a little bit warmer as compared to the ones that are further away. It's important that you uh, show that because that's going to help give the whole thing some, you know, dimension. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this so far as compared to this and this, but I want to get the sky in because the sky is um, going to really help me key it in here at the end. A lot of times I'll save the sky for the very end 
but because of the um, the atmosphere that um, we have in this scene, I think the sky is important to at least key in for right now and then key everything else off of it. So with the skies, we're going, we're adding more white <clears throat> and more of the uh, nickel yellow as we come down here. But as I work my way up, we're gonna add more um, like cobalt and, cer and cerulean blue. Or you just had to uh, kill this really annoying insect that was constantly grabbing onto my leg, my foot. I think it was a type of bee and I do not want to get stung because I am, <clears throat> at least I used to be allergic to bee stings. And he was crawling right on my leg, so. Okay, so as we move up, you can see that I'm adding more um, cerulean to my color. And we're going to move into cobalt because cobalt's even cooler and a little darker than cerulean. Cerulean's more green. So I want to get this cobalt in here as we move up to the zenith of the sky. And you want to use very clean white and a clean brush when you do these skies. You don't want any of the earth tones getting in there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that sky. At least right now I am. So I'm um, gonna move back into the um, actual cliff itself and make some modifications to it.
Right now I'm just using uh, ultramarine blue and that um, Gamblin's Portland Gray to get this color. Mixed in with just a touch of white here and there. The Gamblin's uh, Portland Gray is uh, fairly light in value, which makes it um, nice for giving the illusion of atmosphere, especially in a scene that has lots of atmosphere like this. So I really want to get the value between this and this worked out. Add just a touch of viridian as we go down here. Um, if you're interested in supporting my channel, I have a um, Patreon account set up where you can um, donate on a monthly basis and help me with the, all the expenses that go into this, the extra camera equipment, um, editing software, the extra paint, brushes, canvas. Not to mention all the uh, mileage driving. I spent days driving here, so it um, costs quite a bit of money to make these free videos. So if you're interested in helping out, that would be awesome. Um, <clears throat> there's a link below where you can click on to uh, sign up. To contribute and as a special thank you to my patreon supporters i'm going to be once a month giving away a free painting i should say sketch really one of these plein air sketches um i probably won't give it one the ones i do out west here just because i really need these for my own reference material He's not in the campground too, <laughs> or on park. But um, most of the other paintings you see me do on this channel um, are up for uh, for uh, giving away. They'll be on, they'll be on frame, but um, they're the original. They'll be signed.
and it's just a special thank you for helping me out with all the uh, things, expenses that go along with this. One of the things I want to do when I um, get enough contributions is to get a, a nice wireless mic. I'm using a wired mic right now and half the time tripping on the cord and everything. But anyway, check it out below. If you'd uh, like to help out, that'd be great. Okay, so now it's time for the highlights. And I'm just kind of curious on something. I'm going to try... That's what I thought. I'm just throwing on this Portland Gray. And that's almost right there. It's amazing, this color. How it just mimics the sunlit side of um, rocks. Distant rocks especially. That highlight's too light. And what I can do with this Portland Gray is, if I want to darken it, push it away, I just add a little bit of blue to it, or Viridian, and that will um, dull it down and push it back. I think I might switch to a palette knife for this. Looks like I'm soon going to have to replenish my ultramarine blue. Got a horse fly on my back. Those things hurt when they bite. So I'm getting a little bit darker as I uh, go down here. And I'm thickening up the paint a little bit.
just to warn you, I'm gonna get pretty quiet on you guys because I'm getting into the part where I really have to concentrate and think about these um, very subtle tones in here. I'm gonna try a uh, badger hairbrush. This is um, Rosemary and Company. Their Series 279 Long Flats. Okay, that's too light there. I want to make sure I'm constantly squinting at this scene. So once I stop squinting, I'm going to start seeing all this little detail in there. And painting this minute detail that's just going to uh, totally destroy the feeling of uh, depth in this. Looks like we got another vehicle coming through.
The light's changing pretty fast, but I'm just trying to take my time. <clears throat> Usually I don't paint quite this big for a scene like this, just because of the fast changing light. But I thought, what the heck. I like this scene so much that I thought, let's paint it big. Big for me, that is. Quite a few more cars coming through here. I just have a feeling one of them will be in my parking spot. Now, technically it's not my parking spot, but... As it gets up here, these highlights get very subtle. They get darker. And very slight. And I definitely want to try to mimic that as much as I can. That's the whole reason I'm out here in the first place. Oh wow, we got another car. Oh, by the way, if you're interested, I teach live online oil painting classes. Do it through uh, Zoom. I meet with my students um, almost once a week, four times a month, and we work on a painting from start to finish over a four week period of time. Don't paint nearly as fast, but I show you uh, everything I'm doing All the uh, brush strokes, all the theory behind it. I don't talk much on these because I have to concentrate a lot and painting from life is a lot of concentration. But I don't paint from life there. I do it in my studio so I have a lot of time to uh, really get deep into it. And share with you what I'm doing. So if you are interested, uh, there's a link below in the description. It's the first link you'll see. And you can go to the waiting list 
and sign up. And if a spot comes open, I open the doors once a month for the simple fact that because we work on one painting over a four week period of time, I can't let you in the middle of the month because we'll be halfway done with the painting we're working on. But when a spot does come open, I let you know and if you're interested, you can become a member. All the sessions are recorded, so if you can't make a session, no big deal. Watch it later at your convenience as many times as you want, as long as you keep your membership up. Also, you get <clears throat> immediate access when you become a member to all my past painting sessions, the recordings of those. So you get to watch those too. Uh, if you're interested, check it out. I think you'll uh, really like it. it would take all levels. You don't have to be a master artist or anything like that to start. It's a fun group. Everyone's really nice. But I do recommend that uh, you only uh, join if you're serious, that's all I ask. Um, if you're not, you don't have to, you can be a beginner, but just make sure that you're kind of a serious beginner. I won't kick you out if you're not, but uh, it's just going to be better for you. I also do an advanced uh, class um, where I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one with uh, certain students. So if you're super serious, um, you might want to consider doing the advanced class. So there's one-on-one -on -one weekly feedback. Uh, we meet for a half hour a week, plus we do the regular classes but you get that extra half hour one-on-one -on -one time and uh, basically uh, unlimited email support. So if you're super serious, uh, you might want to think about that too. Anyway, check out, check out the link below. Join the waiting list if you're interested. Love to have you there. Okay, those colors I put in are just too warm. I made the mistake of not not squinting. So let's uh, cool those down again.
Okay, so at this point, we're quite a bit on the rock and I feel like I have a pretty good capturing of the values and colors. I'm going to have to replenish my blues and then uh, start up again. Okay, so got my blues replenished. Now, when you're doing these, any detail that you put in here, you just want to make sure that it doesn't destroy the feeling of distance, the feeling of this being far away. And it's so easy to destroy that when you're doing these things. Part of the trick is, you know, constantly squint. Look at the whole scene. Little trick that's good to do is, you know, when you're painting these, um, these closer cliff areas, when you look up, don't look at the cliff areas. Look at maybe the foreground trees or even look at the sky. Just look at these cliff areas from the corner of your eye. And when you do that, <clears throat> you won't um, be thrown off by all the uh, subtle little um, colors that you see and value shifts you'll see in the, uh, in the cliff areas themselves that when you try to replicate them, completely destroy the feeling of um, distance that these, um, these, these cliffs have. Another thing too is that when you um, do want to add some warm areas to these cliffs, to, the, to these hills back here, is um, don't just jump from blue, say over to ochre or to yellow or something like that. Sneak up on it. So if you see an area that um, looks warmer, instead of jumping from blue to here, maybe jump from blue to um, alizarin or from blue to viridian and put those colors in first and see if they get you there. A lot of times you're going to find you don't have to or want to move any closer or any warmer than that because if you do, it's just going to bring the whole thing really forward and just kill that um, that atmospheric perspective that this that a scene like this should have and must have in order for it to work out. There's some children playing in the distance kind of screaming so that should definitely keep the grizzly bears away if there were any in this area in the first place.
a little too dark in value there. You want to keep your values really tight and your color temperature is really tight in these areas. The light in this is probably looking a bit different than in the reference photo. The sun is constantly moving and shifting. And I am chasing the light just a little bit. Mainly because you just, you can't f stop freeze a, uh, you know, a scene. The camera is, is uh, freezing a scene in less than, you know, a second. It's a microsecond. Whereas this, you know, takes an hour or two to do. But your goal should never be to uh, be a camera. To try to just freeze, you know, one second worth of information. We humans don't experience things like that anyway, so what's the point? Paint your experience, even if, you know, and if your experience is a couple hours and do that. That doesn't mean you foolishly chase the light in every scenario, but things are going to change and don't be afraid to paint some of the change, if, especially if it looks good. For these very subtle reflected light areas that are up here, I'm just using the uh, Gamlin's um, Portland Gray uh, Warm almost straight out of the tube. Sometimes I'm mixing it with a little bit of cobalt, but it does such a wonderful job, like I said, of mimicking some of these uh, tones. Definitely won't be any grizzly bears around here now. Those kids are really making a lot of noise. Don't know if you can hear it or not. Sounds like they're having a lot of fun.
Not sure if you can hear it, but that kid has one of the most interesting screams I've heard out of a child. My wife and I have children, but I don't know if they've ever heard one scream like that. Okay, I've worked quite a while on this. I'm gonna step back, do the upside down test. I think it's pretty good. I could nibble away at this uh, cliff all day, but actually I can't because the light's gonna change too soon for me to do that. Okay, so I had to take a break there. So back to it. Um, cleaning out the pallet and make next I'm gonna rework this uh, foreground just a bit. Still not sure about this area here, if I'm gonna leave that or not. I might not even worry about it with this painting. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> I could put another tree right in there have it come so far up, it might not be a bad idea, um, considering you know, sometimes when you have these areas that are really challenging to do here, a, um, sorry, got to get my paper towels, uh, a device you can do is, you know, put something there, plus I think it give it more interest anyway. So what the heck, let's do that. I'm gonna mix a nice dark. Come up right about here, I think. Gonna have, to, gonna have to replenish my uh, transparent red oxide, but I'm just gonna bring that down like that. Okay, so we have that in there. Now I wanna make a few adjustments 
to this um, middle ground area. I want it to be um, of course uh, a little greener than what's back here and this is quite this area right here represents quite an expanse of land so we can um, push that back we can have some stronger greens here in the foreground I don't want it to be as strong as here but a little bit stronger And we'll have it go back. Here come some more bees. I really hate, I hope he doesn't land on me. I don't want to have to kill a bee because I know that they uh, are so important for pollinating and everything. I just can't risk uh, getting stung out here in the middle of nowhere. Oh, thank you. Not sure how she saw it. I wasn't really pointing facing the road, but. Had another artist come up, uh, chat with me for a bit. That's kind of nice. trying to get uh, some suggestion of shadows in here. Make sure that my mic's still working. Yep. Stepped on my cord again. Okay, one of those children is really upset now they're screaming their heads off. Maybe they got told no popsicles tonight.
It's amazing the things you'll experience when you're out plein air painting. So up in the um, mountain here, there is some greens, but we don't want them to be very green. So I'm taking Viridian and the Gamlin's Portland Gray, warm, and mixing those two together. A little bit of that white. Go with a little more Viridian here cool it off and darken it just a bit. It's pretty good. I think I'm going to add a touch of cobalt, darken it and cool it even more to push it back even more. I think I need some ultramarine. Pretty much perfect.
Okay, time to replenish a couple of colors and finish this up. Okay, we're just uh, finishing up some, doing some finishing touches on this. And you want to be careful when you're uh, doing these highlights on these mostly backlit scenes that you don't um, go crazy with them. I just put a few in here. Another thing I think I want to do is break up this right here a little bit and maybe add another tree right in there. Let's give that a bit more interest. And when you're doing these trees, um, you know, I, I constantly hammer my students about this in my workshops, my online workshops, but they, um, there's a tendency when you're a beginner to paint just a wall of trees, paint them all the same size, the same shape, the same height, you know, and make them look like they're a hedge. And you don't want to do that. Remember these trees, there's some growing behind, there's some growing, you know, in, in front, different shapes, different sizes. And so having clusters, you know, and sometimes even just um, ambiguous clusters like this without defining them as an actual tree can look better and more realistic than if you have like, you know, long triangle, long triangle, long triangle, so on and so forth. And you can learn that just from studying nature quite a bit. There are some highlights on these trees. For the most part, I'm not going to do a whole lot with them. I'm going to apply them just a little bit on the tops here. But you don't want to go too crazy with the highlights. You definitely don't want to make them too light, as I was starting to do right there. Just enough to show a bit of depth and distance. Uh, I'm sorry, not depth and distance, but um, structure will be good. Remember, it's really all about simplification. I want to thank you for watching. Um, if you watched this long, congratulations. This was a, uh, felt like anyway, a longer painting. But um, if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. Hit the like button if you like this video. If you watched this long, hopefully you did like it. Or else you were just really bored. And um, we will uh, see you again soon on the uh, next painting video.